I'd like to introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Greg Lolly. My wife, Carol, we own Mayan Farm. Uh, we're basically a medicinal plant farm. We started out doing more vegetables and doing uh, market type vegetable stuff. But in the last few years, we've kind of shifted a little bit and started uh, leaning more toward the specialty crop uh, medicinal plant market. We sell here at the uh, farm store and we sell at the East Chase in Montgomery, and then we go to Wetumpkin once a month on Thursdays for their market day. Uh, we started this whole thing as a vehicle to end retirement. I retired in 2017. I graduated high school in 1975. There was a lot of greening of America, and uh, I was I was into it, but the thing about it was, at the time, I didn't think I could make any money at it. So I ended up going to college and got a degree in electronics and then went into aviation. But in reality, it took me 40-something years to get back to where I probably was the most happiest in my whole life. So uh, I'm back doing what I think I was started to do at the very beginning. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, Moringa today. It's one of our main uh, items that we grow here as far as medicinal plants and, and it being food. So we try to concentrate on uh, having our food as medicine instead of having to take a medicine. Let's just have our food be our medicine. And so Moringa is one of those kinds of things. And you, as you can see, uh, the, the stalks here are from where I cut them down last year. They are actually a... Um, uh, tropical type plant so they can't take pretty much below about I don't know maybe 45 degrees or so they'll start dropping their leaves off <clears throat> so what I do is I come in here in the fall and I'll cut it off just like you saw right there and this is new growth that's come up from the bottom the root that's still there so this comes up like this uh, during the uh, during the spring and then as it goes You'll see it'll get taller and taller, but these are the leaves, and we eat the leaves off of them, and this will actually grow to be 25 to 30 feet tall by November. So I usually will leave maybe a quarter of a, these two rows right here. I'll leave them to go to seed, basically, and then we take those seeds and we sell them, and you can see... Uh, they uh, they come out like that with about maybe eight or ten or twelve different kinds of, uh, of stalks that come out. But they do that every year, and they, you can cut them right back to the ground, and they just come right back. Um, it's known a lot of places as the never die tree. Another thing that we do around here is we plant a lot of comfrey. This is a comfrey plant right here. This is one we planted, and and generally there's some all along in this uh, row with the uh, Moringa. Uh, comfrey is a good uh, accumulator type plant. It has a deep tap root, goes down real deep, brings up a lot of uh, nutrients up to the top. Of course, the Moringa does the same thing. It has extremely long tap root. So we really don't have to do a whole lot of watering or anything to them. Uh, once they get established, you don't really have to worry about it a whole lot. But uh, we plant a lot of the comfrey around. It's another one of those uh, those plants that are that are good to be planted around uh, your other stuff. Um, another thing too is is if you look right here, this is actually elderberry. This is the elderberry right here. Also, uh, something we do here that that most of your uh, permaculture type people will understand, and that is that we have a hugel pile right here. This is a hugel culture, but basically what it is, I dug a big hole. We actually cut down a. a a big oak tree over by the barn and so we didn't want the wood to just rot away so we took that uh, and buried it here and then piled the soil back on top of it so we grow herbs and things on top of this but there's a lot of medicinal type plants and, and a lot of them you know it's like when people say they, they talk about weeds they are weeds you know but weeds are, are a useful thing uh, I don't think there's any non-useful plants on the earth. I think God made every plant to have a use. And so even though these weeds aren't doing exactly what we think they ought to, uh, one of the premises that we operate on is that 
you know i'll i'll let a weed grow to the point to where it's about to seed and even sometimes if i want more of that weed uh, to let it go i'll let it go to seed but there's a function that that weed is taking place it's doing a function for me so you know i don't have the wherewithal of the knowledge to be able to understand what all is going on uh, in this system here but i do know that um, there are no uh, junk plants they're only plants that are successional and they're trying to do something to your soil they're trying to mediate or uh, fix some kind of a, an action that's that's happened on the soil whether it be compaction or whether it be um, you know some uh, chemical or or uh, I mean any number of different things but all these weeds are nothing but successional plants uh, I try to work within that system whatever it is in that system so that I can reap the best benefit that I can out of the processes that are going on in my system okay so what we've done here we've we've kind of made a little bit of a transition I'm trying to uh, do some different things inside the tunnel house <clears throat> not so much uh, just regular vegetables, but going more to the specialty crops. So this is all uh, ginger right here that are, are in bags. So I'm experimenting with the bags because what I've noticed is that a lot of times it's it's really hard to uh, get the soil off of the, the uh, ginger. So you spend a lot of time. So I'm hoping that with the bag and my mixture that I'll be able to uh, wash the ginger real easy and it be able to uh, uh, be a better product for me and uh, I can get a premium price for it. So uh, same kind of thing here is uh, these are uh, turmeric here. These are all turmeric except for this. This is actually a, uh, a uh, avocado that was in the, in the uh, compost pile that sprouted it. Carol said pulled it up and said here plant that. So I put it in here and we'll see how it does. But anyway, we're just kind of trying to transition some of this uh, tunnel house over to uh, more. Uh, uh, I'm probably going to plant some ginger in the ground just to see how it does too. But. So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the uh, turmeric that I was talking about. Uh, these are actually uh, ones that I have started in these little bags. And uh, you can see... Uh, they're beginning to sprout there. That's a that's a black turmeric right there. So I have about four different kinds of turmeric that uh, that I grow. Um, I'm trying to uh, really uh, concentrate and, and grow more of the the uh, other types of turmeric because they all have medicinal value. Everybody knows about the uh, curcuma longa, but now some of these other ones, the green and the black, and, and some of the others are, are for other different kinds of things. So uh, they uh, are just used for different things but uh, as you can see they're just beginning to sprout there and then I'll plant that in one of those bags in there and uh, they'll come along and, and by September uh, or so they will have uh, grown enough to where I can, uh, can harvest those. Uh, these are IBC totes that uh, we have bought uh, for thinking that we would do uh, some kind of a rainwater catchment system. But when we got the grant or the uh, equip uh, cost share for the well, uh, we kind of shifted a little bit and we didn't have to uh, uh, do the rainwater harvesting. We didn't think we wanted to anymore because we had a well. So I had all these totes that I had bought. So I said, well, I could go ahead and, and get some soil and fill them up. And uh, these are actually open on the bottom, so they go all the way through the soil. So they're not any kind of a bottom in them or anything like that. They're just cut out on the, the top and the bottom of it. And then I took the, uh, the IBC tote and cut it in half. And the reason why I put this, uh, it's actually sign material from my, uh, signs on the side of the road that I bought. And uh, take that and put it over the white plastic or because it has no UV protection in it, hardly at all. So it really deteriorates really, really fast. So uh, if you have a, a access to some uh, IBC totes, they make great beds, uh, but you just have to put a little bit of something over the plastic to make sure they don't uh, 
deteriorate because of the uh, UV. These are elderberries that are flowers. And this is uh, just one that started from a stick that I just stuck in the ground. I went to a friend of mine's house, and I like the way it looked because it was a big plant. Some people don't like the big plants. There are plants that they need to be big, and some of them need to be small because of where you put them. But, but this one I thought would go good here because it was like my primary place. And like I was talking about, if I have, if I have vegetables or something planted there, and I took that away, then those mycelium will be able to migrate to the roots of the of the elderberry. More elderberries, flowers. Of course, the uh, Swiss chard doesn't like the heat. <clears throat> you see, it's it's kind of unhappy. But um, kale, we like to grow kale. Uh, these are some Chinese Chinese vegetables. Uh, we like the bok choy and, and uh, tat soy, and uh, we like to uh, stir fry those. And uh, we have uh, patty pan squash there. And uh, on the other end of that, we have going up that way is um, roselle. Roselle is a, I'm sure you probably have heard of hibiscus tea. It's where you get your calyxes of hibiscus tea comes from. But uh, we grow a lot of those because the moringa and the hibiscus go really well together because of the uh, properties that both of them have for helping with blood sugar and, and blood pressure. So a lot of people will take the hibiscus flowers and put them with the moringa and make a tea out of it. So we wanted to be able to grow our own uh, hibiscus also so that whenever somebody bought it, they knew that it came from us and, and was all totally grown here. So uh, these are uh, winter huckleberries here. They're coming along, and are not winter huckleberries. They're uh, black huckleberries. Winter huckleberry is a tree. Uh, these are black huckleberries, and, and basically you don't eat them off of the uh, bush. Uh, we make uh, jams and jellies and things like that. Out of it. It's value-added type stuff. You know? But uh, it's a good good one for around here. But uh, those are all the rest of the uh, patty pans. Now these... This is uh, stinging nettle, so don't touch that. Uh, we use it in a lot of our salves and creams and stuff like that. So a lot of these things that have the flowers in them and stuff like that, you know, Mother Nature doesn't like to be uncovered. So Mother Nature, like all moms, like to be covered. So uh, she doesn't like to have uh, her, her skin, which is the soil, uh, uncovered. So we try to cover everything up. And I, I'm, I'm very, I'm okay uh, with... Uh, a few weeds here and there until they start, uh, you know, causing a problem because I know that they're they're having a function, they're they're performing a function, and uh, they're part of the system, and uh, I'm the alien, so, so I'm just trying to work within the system. Um, we had grown last year. We grew all uh, plantain. This is plantain right here, and you probably see that all along and the way you can tell plantain is it has five veins in the leaf you can see that right there it has five veins so if you see that that five vein leaf pretty much that's going to be a plantain of some type as far as i know i've not seen anything else that had the five distinct ridges in it like that but um uh, this is good for a lot of different things good for salves and things like that and um i mentioned a while ago i mentioned metamucil and Metamucil is actually made from the seed from the plantain plant. It's psyllium. That is where psyllium comes from. It comes from the plantain plant. So uh, we grow a lot of these for our medicinal type uh, stuff. So uh, a lot of these things, though, are about to be transitioned over into turmeric. So I have a lot of turmeric, as you saw a while ago, that will be coming along. So we'll be planting those out. So... Uh, a lot of this stuff will, will become all uh, turmeric. Um, and this is another type of plantain. This is, it's still plantain. It's just a different variety. And you can still see the same see the same vein pattern just like we did before. It's got those high ridges on the veins there. And it'll have five or, or maybe even seven sometimes. 
but uh, you can see that's a little bit different than the other one. It makes a real wide leaf. So if you wanted a poultice to be made out of plantain, then you'd want the wide leaf. So there's some of it's wide leaf, some of it's uh, uh, narrow leaf. But uh, you can see the bee, the bee is really working on that right there on that uh, plantain flower. That's one of the things about having all these type of flowers and, and different kinds of plants that bloom at different times. You can see there we don't have uh, a whole lot of other things, but <clears throat> different bees like different things. So, you know, we want to provide as much uh, natural environment for these insects that we can. So we want to look at our, our system as a whole and not just as an isolated uh, incident or whatever. This is one of our bug hotels is what we call them. It basically is just a place uh, for uh, animals, uh, insects. Uh, we've had, we have birds going in there. The birds know that the bugs live in there too. So we actually have birds that come in and, and raid the nests of the bugs that are living inside the bug hotel but it's all part of the system so um, these places that these bugs can go and hibernate and and raise their young and and do all these kinds of things that they would normally do out in the in the normal system uh, we want to provide some habitat for that we want the whole complete system working here we don't want to leave anybody out because everybody is part of the system um, and all it is is just different, basically stuff like there's cardboard in a in a milk jug, you know, and some pieces of metal, and you know it could be pretty much anything. But now the only thing is, you have to watch out because uh, you are inviting wasps, and wasps are a big part of our system. Now, and they generally won't mess with you unless they feel threatened, and you touch their house or something like that, their nest. But uh, you always have to be careful because you are living with these things. And we have lots of spiders. We have lots of wasps. We have lots of all kinds of things that are trying to hurt you. But uh, we just try to stay out of their way and uh, work within their system because, you know, they were here a long, long time before we were. <laughs> but um, one of the bug hotels. This is called a bitter melon. And bitter melon is um, one of those uh, stalwarts, I guess you'd say, of Ayurvedic medicine. This is one of our big ones right here that we grow. It goes right along with uh, turmeric and uh, ginger. We have mullen here. This is mullen. It's uh, native to around here. And this, the way we got started with mullen was we went and, and grabbed, this will actually make a big stalk that'll come up that'll have the seeds on it so we went and we collected the stalk and we kind of throw it out the seeds here and you can see there's another one over there and this one right here and there's several here and there so i wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh what we're going to do back here this actually was done last year and we grew one crop or i say we grew one crop we we grew one crop for the deer is what we did last year they pretty much ate everything but I think what we're going to do, and we did this because of the micro-irrigation to get the equip uh, cost share on micro-irrigation. So we got that, and we've got the uh, well house there. I still don't have the irrigation run from the well house out to the tunnel house, but that's what that uh, PEX pipe will be for there. But the plan is back here on this back side, that is actually a south-facing hill. So this is one of the reasons why we bought this place is because it was on an east-west, pretty much north-south square sitting. And so that hill was on the, on the, uh, the south side. So my plan is to have uh, some fruit tree gills back there. And so those fruit tree gills will consist of a fruit tree or a nut tree, one or the other, and then it'll have associated trees that would be around it. And it would be something like maybe, uh, of course, we would have elderberries there. We would have different kinds of old, other berries like blueberries, those kinds of things as bushes. But basically what we want to do is we want to start off with the, uh, some kind of a fruit tree or nut tree and then have associated trees around it and, and basically a permaculture uh, fruit tree gill type of thing.
and actually have uh, some vegetables down here in the bottom. One of the things that we've found uh, is at the farmer's market, we do really well with plants. And a lot of them are, uh, and I guess maybe we're becoming a little bit more known for permaculture uh, type plants and uh, uh, regenerative type plants, I guess you'd say. As a, a new and beginning farmer, you got to look at different ways that you can make money and, and the ways that you can uh, uh, monetize what you're doing and uh, uh, capture as much as you can whenever you go to the farmer's market for your time that you're doing there. So you don't want to go to the farmer's market and, and sell a few vegetables and come back home and wish you'd been able to sell more. So you want to have something like this so if somebody's not buying vegetables, they could be you know, buying a plant or something like that, you know. Uh, we've had a lot of success uh, with uh, being affiliated with the New and Beginning Farmer Program whenever we first got started. Uh, had it not been for those uh, words of wisdom that we got from farmers and, and from people who were working with the Beginning Farmer Program that kind of guided us through uh, some of the, the uh, I guess, government, bureaucracy and not even knowing what question to ask when you go down to the NRCS or the FSA office. They really helped us formulating the questions that we needed to ask to get the help that we needed. Uh, we were able to secure uh, a tunnel house uh, uh, equipped in 2015. We s completed the tunnel house in 2016, right around July, August of 2016. And then uh, we also, a couple of years later, received uh, through SAR and Auburn University, uh, they came down and put netting around our tunnel house so that we could participate in the uh, uh, studies that they had on, on uh, bugs inside and outside the tunnel house and see how effective the, uh, the uh, netting was working and that kind of thing. And then a little bit later than that, we actually came up and got a micro-irrigation equip grant or cost share and we also received one for the well so those are the last two things that we've done but but like I said had it not been for the Alabama New and Beginning Farmer Program we probably would be nowhere near where we are today because of the, the knowledge that they had already to kind of get us in the right direction and I think that's important to all new and beginning farmers to have a mentor or someone who can help them as they navigate all these government agencies and, and trying to ask the right question in the right office to get the help that you need. Another one, be open to changing midstream because you one of the things about being a new farmer and, and is being able to shift and to change and uh, be able to go to where uh, your niche is, whatever your niche might be, uh, I think probably every new and beginning farmer needs to have that in their thought process of where they fit into the overall uh, makeup of the farming community and, and don't try to grow everything that somebody else is growing. Find something that is it works on your land. Let your land dictate to you what you should grow on your land. Just be willing to change and be uh, willing to, to be a mentor, a bit, to have a mentor and to be able to listen and to uh, take from that experience. As my uh, grandmother used to say, take a page out of somebody else's book. You know, that would be one of the biggest things.